Hey guys, welcome back to my second video of how to loop in Dead by Daylight. In this video, I'm going to cover all of the outside loops that I didn't have time to cover in the first video. That includes like Bad Am Preschool, Strode, or Lapkin Lane. Some of the weird jungle gyms like the Yamoka jungle gym, the one that first was shown in Yamoka State, if I'm even saying that right. Um, it's also on Ormond, so I'm going to demonstrate it actually on Ormond since it's clearer to see as well as a few other things that I didn't cover that I'll just list on the screen now. Timestamps can be found in the description below, as well as I'm gonna pin it to the first comment since people have a habit of not reading the description. To save as much time as possible and to get right into the video, I'm gonna have a couple of like weird disclosure things about these looping videos at the end so that people who actually want to get into the video now can. And so with that being said, I'm just gonna get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is the Yamoka Estate Jungle Gym, which is gonna be shown here. Again, I'm showing it on Ormond because it's, a, in my opinion, a lot easier to see for me to demonstrate it. This is just a loose example of me looping my buddy Justice, who is purposely playing a little more on the boosted side. But it's just one example of when you're going against a killer not particularly strong with Chase, who makes one or two mistakes, and how punishing this Jungle Gym can be against that killer. So now let's talk about the diagram. So here's a diagram I sketched up in Photoshop because unfortunately there's no Reddit post of this that I could find so far. If you look at this jungle gym, you can see almost like three lanes going uh, vertically up the diagram. And you obviously see the palette in the window and the red circle there is just where a hook is usually located. Now the most useful part of this jungle gym isn't really the palette, it's the window. The window can be fast vaulted from multiple directions. In fact, there's three like close directions, but there's four ways to enter this tile to use up your distance and then vault the window to give you more distance. And this jungle gym is particularly underrated because not only do most survivors that I'm teaching, you know, you not really know the jungle gym that well, most killers also do not know the jungle gym that well. And so looking at this diagram, uh, it gives you a significant advantage over somebody who might not see this diagram or might not spend time looking at this whacked jungle gym. Now, the most confusing part about this jungle gym is the top part where there's diagonal walls. This part confuses the shit out of survivors, especially when they get caught up in this spot because I don't know why. They just think it's an entrance, they go in there, they get stuck, they think it's a corner, they just, they, they get confused on what orientation the, the jungle gym is and they just get stuck in this little pocket. Anyway, let's talk about how to loop it. So like I said, there's multiple ways to fast vault this window. And each time you cross this window, the killer has th well, three choices, but two real choices. The three choices are go left, go right, or vault the window. For the sake of time, I'm just going to say almost no killer is going to vault that window unless they have bamboozle. It just takes way too long and it makes more sense to go left or right with the potential of the mind game than to vault the window going straight. No matter which way the killer goes, you basically just go the opposite direction and watch out for them to moonwalk or double back. If they go right, for example, it opens up the opportunity for you to go left into the entire jungle gym, loop through the pallet. You could do a lot of things here, but the most general thing is to loop with as much distance as you can so that by the time you get to the window, it's close, but not close enough for them to hit you. Then you vault and they have to go around again, giving you more distance to then make it back to the pallet or whatever. There might be a loop nearby that you can use instead. If the killer goes left, they're gonna push you to the outside of the jungle gym. And in this example, it's super important to make sure that the killer doesn't double back or mind game you at all. You need to be very responsive to if they go left. If they do go left and they don't end up mind gaming, you literally just have to come back around and through the pallet. And in my experience, I've had enough distance multiple times that now I just come around the pallet as though it's a, just a regular loop, just in a circle, and hit the pallet. And there's not much else you can do just considering this loop. There is always the option that if there's a loop nearby that seems like a less valuable loop than an entire jungle gym, go to that loop. If you have other options, use like a filler pallet or a less valuable like shit pallet. Don't use... Jungle gym palette should be reserved, in my opinion, but anyway. So now we'll quickly talk about this other tile that is specific to, again, Ormond and Yamaoka Estate. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Um, anyway, there's a palette here that can mostly be treated like it's a filler palette, but if you use the palette respect of the killer, or if you drop the palette and they don't kick it or whatever, if you use it correctly, um, you can force a free vault in the window, as I show here, and in the case where you do manage to vault this window, you can treat it just like you learned 
how to treat long wall jungle gems in my other example. The killer might vault, he might go around. A any instance where you can force another free vault is a good instance. And of course, watch through the window and other areas to see if the killer is doubling back or not. Pretty simple. Um, there's not a lot of creativity here um, compared to like what you must have already learned in the first video. But again, basically it's a filler palette. While it's totally possible, I wouldn't recommend looping around the actual wall side because you the killer can mind game it super easily by just moonwalking one way or the other. You can't really see anything but their red light. So I don't recommend looping around the wall side of this tile. This next weird jungle gym is basically the same as a long wall jungle gym from the first video. You can come from nearly any direction on the inside or the outside as long as you can get a fast vault. And even if you don't, if you have enough distance, I guess it would be fine, but it's pretty easy to get a fast vault on this jungle gym. And all you've got to do once you vault the window is the killer can go left or right. It's just like a long wall. So whichever way they go, you just go the opposite direction. But keep in mind, like a long wall jungle gym, and like I said in the first video, the killer is likely going to pretend to go one direction and vault the window. Unless they're like a ranged killer or something, in which case they might like fake and throw a hatchet at you. Either way, I would recommend treating this just like a long wall jungle gym from the first video. And that should be enough set. Alright, so next we're going to talk about some of the building structures you're going to find on Bad Am Preschool or like Lapkin Lane. The first one's going to be what we commonly in my group call uh, the two-story, which is the Bad Ham preschool two-story building that can also be found on Lapkin Lane, but it's a different variation of that building. For starters, the vault window is never open, not that I've ever seen, and um, there's never a pallet upstairs. Instead, there's this weird open window that's like a side vault out of the house, which is like a god vault because the killer, if you vault, they pretty much have to vault unless they want a mind game through the house and try to cut you off or something. Keep in mind there's always a few vaults but the one vault that doesn't really change between these houses is the on safe vault that leads to the front door where if the if the killer chases you upstairs and they see that you're about to vault they can just go back down the stairs and cut you off at the bottom and hit you every time. Notice also that the stair railing isn't broken so the killer doesn't have a like quote shortcut here. But the shortcut actually doesn't matter on this loop because there's no pallet to really loop here. So if you're running around upstairs in circles, I would ask why. So right off the bat, I'm going to say one of the most common and now less commonly used strategies is to run straight up the stairs and to vault the window immediately to the outside. The reason I say it's not so common anymore, but still still kind of the most common strategy is because killers will oftentimes just hang back by the stairs and see if you're going to vault. If you do vault, they're just going to go around the stairs to the back door and get a hit on you unless you have maybe balance or something. Alternatively, if you don't vault, they're in a position to come right up the stairs and at that point if you decide to vault, like if you stopped or something and then go to vault again, you're probably going to get a shit vault, like a medium vault, or you can try to loop the upstairs, which is what we're going to talk about now. So the alternative option to immediately vaulting if you decide to go right upstairs is to loop the pallet that's going to be located upstairs. You can loop this pallet just like a regular filler pallet like we talked about in the first video. An important difference here though is number one, you can't see through the wall, so you're going to have to use red stains or clever positioning with yourself on the loop to see if the killer is going to double back or try to mind game it and in what way. Two, an important thing to notice is that this variation on Bad Am allows for a shortcut where the killer can just jump off the railing onto the stairway and cut you off from continuing your loop. If they do this and you just turn around and hug the railing, you can usually get a fast vault out to the front and this is the only time the window becomes even remotely safe because the killer will probably follow you to the window and it just it, it, it would take more time for them to jump down than it would normally if you just instantly vaulted when they were on the stairway. Like you, you have enough distance then to probably get to a pallet. These maps alone, like Bad Am Preschool alone, I could do a whole video on how to loop these different structures. Same with Lapkin Lane, literally every single map. There's just so many variations of each one of these buildings um, that it would just it would it would be too hard to go over every single variation and every single looping strategy. The point of this video is to give you a general idea of how to loop these structures so that you can get a little better until you learn to pick up on general looping practices so that you can just use your intuition to loop basically. Anyway, the main idea to loop House of Pain is to go down the garage stairs, around the back of the garage stairs, 
up the other stairs and out the open window. Sometimes a window at the top of the stairs is open, sometimes another window is open. Regardless, all the windows in the house are usually best utilized when vaulted from the inside to the outside. With that being said, that's almost all. The only thing you need to know is some killers, when they see you go down the stairs, is they'll go around to the other side and go down the other stairs and like cut you off basically because they think you're not paying attention. Make sure that they're behind you and you should be able to loop House of Pain pretty well. Just make sure you know where the killer is, turn the opposite way, go up some stairs, go out a window, find your way back in, find your way back downstairs, use the pellet if you need to, pretty simple. Um, try not to hesitate too much because distance is, is pretty important on this tile. But it's a strong tile, so no matter what, you should get a decent chase anyway. And the worst case scenario is you give a free hit because you were overly patient. Anyway, notice there's subtle differences between the Lapkin Lane version of the House of Pain and the Bad Am Preschool version. Especially the stairs, because the devs patched the fact that you could see through the stairs on Bad Am, but for some reason didn't do that on Lapkin which in my opinion, Lapkin is a little more of a difficult loop, but I guess maybe since the upstairs doesn't have the little walls, it just is kind of open in the living room. Maybe that's why, but anyway, notice these and use them to your advantage. Now there's many other buildings on Lapkin Lane um, that you can go inside of, including the main building where the basement is, but I'm gonna leave you with a general rule for buildings like this. Number one, there's almost always an upstairs vault that forces the killer to go a little further around in order to not have to vault the window. And then sometimes there's a vault near like a back porch that lets you jump from the main building to the outside without going through the porch because there are porch vaults that are incredibly unsafe. I don't know why they even exist. They don't do anything but force you to get a get hit. I guess they're trick vaults like never ever ever i don't know any reason anybody would use these for anything they're useless you vault unless the killer is not near you and you just need a place to hide like i wouldn't even hide there i wouldn't even hide there that's it's such stupid vaults like if you go from the outside to the inside you gave the killer distance for no reason and if you vault from the inside to the outside you have to go towards the door where the killer is going to come out of so you gave the killer distance. Do you see a pattern here? It's pretty stupid. So I wouldn't use these these um, deck vaults, these porch vaults. Um, but any vault like upstairs, or sometimes there is a vault that lets you vault n off of the porch from the inside. Like it lets you vault next to the porch on the outside, which is super good. They're, those are crazy strong. But um, yeah, general rule as well. I wouldn't use the vaults that take you to like on top of the porches like on the roof i wouldn't go outside on the roof unless you have balanced landing or i would go out there super early so that you can get away if you don't have good like if you don't have good resources on the ground near where you drop it's really dangerous to hang out up there i mean people like to window tech the killer that comes out but one if you fuck it up you're guaranteeing you're guaranteeing a free hit two if you don't fuck it up and they're just not dumb then now they're super close to you and you both still have to fall unless you're gonna instantly vault. I don't know, you could insta vault the window after you window tech. There's many things, but in general, I would just rather use downstairs vaults and loops unless the killer forces me upstairs off of a gen or something. Then I would just immediately get off the roof as fast as possible and utilize a loop nearby. Unless you think you're a dead by daylight legend and you're gonna window tech into an insta vault like through the killer inside and loop inside which i guess would work but anyway also sometimes in the main building there's this god window next to basement if it's there make sure you know it's there because if you get unhooked in the basement that can be a good way to get out and even if you haven't been hooked in the basement it's a really strong vault to run to something really important about looping here on main is that for some reason this one bush just has collision for no reason just it's just one of those spots that the devs made a map and they fucked up and they never fixed it. I don't know why this happens. Every other bush that I've ever ran through doesn't have collision in the front yard, but right here at the corner it does. And something else important is that if you're coming from the inside of the house out, you can sometimes get over this bump. You can like stand on it, but sometimes when you're coming from the other way, well, every time when you're coming from the other way, you can't cross this bush. I don't know why. 
but it's one of those things that will fucking kill you in a chase because you don't know it's there and it's the stupidest most annoying thing in the world so make sure that you know it's there the last thing I should probably mention is that the Badham variation of the two-story building uh, I should probably mention that there's downstairs looping possibilities as well where almost all these windows act like a small little short L wall. Now I wouldn't say like every player would be able to loop this efficiently, but even the average player should be able to get a couple of vaults from the inside to the outside to uh, gain just a little bit of distance on the killer. But some good players could easily run a killer on all these downstairs windows. All right, so next we're gonna talk about meat tree. Meat tree is one of those tiles that all you do is vault from the inside to the outside of the window come around through the pallet and just vault it three times until the window closes off and even then you can run to the pallet and use the pallet if you need to but seriously on the maps where meat tree spawns it's one of the strong tiles especially on like thompson house and things like that um so if in my opinion that corner of the map where it spawns would probably be more or less dead if you use that pallet so personally i would take a hit on the way to the next tile and leave that pallet for later when somebody else less experienced or something else really needs that because there's probably less players in the game if people are dying or there's more people dead on hooks so that pallet is worth more at that point sometimes the killer will know that you're trying to do this simple three vault loop and then drop the pallet so they'll push you the opposite direction trying to make sure that you don't get the chance to fast vault the window because that cuts this loop down super quick so uh, the only thing you could really do is try to reset it by going around the pallet rocks like now on the other side of the tree and if they just follow you like in, i doubt they would but they could just follow you around and that resets the loop or they're just going to keep doubling back and forth bloodlusting you basically until you have to drop the pallet and if you have to drop the pallet i would say drop it but um, if you, again if you can take a hit and go to a weaker filler pallet or something somewhere less useful than the corner of the map you know it's all up to you it depends how you value different loops if this is like the one of the last loops on the map and you want to save it for somebody else save it but uh if you didn't want to use it I, I would use it you know whatever all right now let's talk about the tractor some killers will just follow you right through the vault on the tractor and this is honestly your best case scenario since the, since the recent patch on the tractor's alternate route. If they follow right through the vault, just immediately turn left, go around the tractor, and vault again. I'm almost certain you can get this vault three times before it locks out. In fact, I usually do. I mean, it depends how much distance you have on the killer initially, but if you have the optimal amount of distance, then you will definitely make it three times around this loop. With that being said, there's also still the alternate route that killers can use although it was slightly patched. Basically, the killers are supposed to have to swing to get around this corner now to get on the hay. And if they are able to do that, they are gonna hit you very quickly. Um, however, if they swing to get on there, there's gonna be a swing cooldown, but I don't think you're gonna get that far around the loop to where you're gonna be able to vault the window again. So what I would recommend instead is if they do swing, just instantly vault back and then instantly vault the other vault and just go somewhere else or if they come all the way around at you again, you could vault a second time on the first window, but that's gonna be your third vault for that chase and it's gonna lock the window out. So you're gonna give up a hit if they successfully swing around and get close to you again. I know that's a lot of weird, not great planned information, but uh, the basic issue is that they patch the alternate route, but a good killer can get onto this little hay spot without swinging. It's very hard. In fact, Justice sat here for like, I literally got three crows waiting for him and he did it three or four times successfully. And the rest of the time, the game made him slide off or bounce off, even though it looked like he landed on it. Um, so just know this is technically patched, but it's hard to tell if it's supposed to be patched for killers because they can sometimes still, without swinging, walk off the edge, land on the hay, and then swing and hit you on the vault. Which, if they're able to do that, you need to completely leave this vault alone for the rest of the game. Just leave it alone go somewhere else all right guys that's gonna do it for this looping video there's so many loops that i really wanted to include in this video but i'm worried about making it way too long and people just getting tired of hearing the songs play over again me talk whatever blah 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 so I, I try not i try not to go much over 20 minutes what i'm realizing is that i'm probably just gonna start doing videos on specific maps or groups of maps like for example backwater swamp would be like a map that i could talk about grim pantry and pale rose and then like the cold wind maps for an entire video and things like that where i'll cover the main building as well as the loops that you'll see there because there's some special loops 
like backwater has the little boat the big boat pale rose there's the the dock things like that that need covered but it's just every time i think i can fit it all in one video um it's it's just more than i thought even existed and the more i get into it the longer i see the video is going to be and um it would be easier to cover like little details of the maps if i had a map specific video because i could easily fit that in a time frame that i want to use keep in mind these videos cover general looping and to loop stronger killers for chase like nurse a good billy huntress uh even like demogorgon and dustlinger you need to take what your base knowledge of looping is know that that killer expects you to do that and then counter it to that specific killer's power i'm covering those types of looping in each killer's own specific looping video so if you're curious about those i've only really done billy so far as of this video i'll try to link them in the description below as i make them that's kind of a hard promise but you should be able to find them on my channel in the future and yeah with that being said like if you like subscribe if you like me and i hope to see you in the next one have a good one guys